Right, well, today we're looking at something a bit different to my usual videos. Um, today we're looking at an old motor that I've got in the shed, one of the uh, many stationary engines I seem to have collected over the years and uh, it's time to move some of them on. I've got, I've got to make some room in the shed, so this is going to be the first one to go. It's a good motor, there's one picked it up from a, a friend who they used it uh, to drive a water pump up their shack up the River Murray and uh, it's an old Villiers. They made millions of these things uh, and they are uh, from, I don't know, really early days in the century right up until probably the 70s I suppose they were still making them. So I don't know what year this is. But uh, I do know it hasn't done a hell of a lot of work. Uh, all it ever did was drive the a, uh, a water pump as I said. So have a look at it. It's uh, it's a 12 slash 2 uh, Villiers, which I believe are at probably a couple of horsepower. They're all side valves, all cast iron. These old girls, so they last for years. You know, they must have sold millions of these things, and they had them on farms all over the place. And uh, we've got a few up the block where we do some work and. Uh, but this is one I just had downtown for a while and uh, put it downtown. Yeah, it's got good compression. Here a bit of governor rattle there, but there's no, no, no bottom end rattle, that's alright. That seems pretty good. So, yeah, these have got a governor on them. Um, this one's totally complete. A lot of them, they, um, you see them around in the, the plastic bowls that go on the carby. They, they're an oil bath um, cleaner and they uh, can perish and shrivel up and crack over, over time. And you can probably still get parts for these, I don't know. But uh, so a lot of them you see around it, they've been run without an air cleaner, which is bad news because the bowls got damaged. and. Uh, but this one's good, this one's all there and uh, apart from being resprayed, you can see she's, she's had a coat of paint it should be this dark green colour, that would be the original colour apart from that she's uh, good that's what the oil's like yeah, plenty of oil and it's all, it's all good and clean, I must have changed that I probably changed when I got it, I can't remember it <laughs> been sitting under the bench for years there she is, so I'll be moving her on and uh, it's all dusty as hell so I'll uh, clean it all down, we'll put some gas in it and we'll see if she goes so hang around, watch the action ok before we try and fire this old girl up with some petrol in it uh, a couple of things you want to do, um, first off check the oil, well we check the oil, it's got good clean oil in it but I did notice it's down a little bit so I topped that up this takes SA30, how do I know it takes SA30? well it's written on the dipstick that unscrews so you always put in the right sort of oil um, 30, straight 30 or 30, 40 multigrade would be, 30, 50 multigrade even would be okay for air cooled engines um, the modern oil is pretty good stuff Next thing, drag the spark plug out because you don't know if this, this thing's got any spark and it's no good trying to bust your boiler pulling it over when there's no spark. So we've dragged the plug out and you can see it's all petrol fouled. So the plug might be okay but then it might not. So get another plug for it. Um, so I went through my plug collection and I've got plenty of them too. Here's the right plug for it. It's, uh, I didn't look at a chart but you can tell by looking at the heat range that that is the right plug. Now how do I know that the heat range is right? Well, if you look at spark plugs you find that the insulator length in, in the centre of the plug generally is the indicator of what the heat range is. So a longer um, insulator like that, that is a much hotter plug. That's a, a plug for a late model vehicle. So, or a two stroke engine. Two strokes like a hot plug as well to try and prevent oiling. So any engine that's burning oil or um, or as a, a late model engine you generally want to uh, have a hot plug so you can see much longer insulator than this one you can barely see the insulator so this is the plug 
Um, obviously, you can look at a reference chart if you want to go to that trouble, but I never bother. I've got plenty of plugs on hand, so I just go with what looks right. Now, um, you set your gap, plug gap on the Villiers motor, um, according to my manual, is uh, the data sheet says uh, 15 thou, so we said the 15 thou. So the next thing is we'll screw a bit of RP7 in it. Plug. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Oh, hang on, before we do that, we've got to check the spark, didn't we? So we'll uh, put the plug on. Alright, let's see if we can see a spark. It's rested on the, on the housing. our fingers, hope there's a spark there. Ah, oh, beautiful fat spark. Excellent. So, that's good to go. Now we can put her in. Don't go over tight with the spark plugs, you've only just got a new them up. on that. The screw down is half stripped out so I'll put on the uh, one that came with the plug. I have got some old style ones in the shelves. I'll get one of those out later and put one on that matches. So, plug's right. Oil's right. Got spark. Look at the fuel can. That's clean. There's no sign of any rust. So, all being uh, well and good with the petrol in it, the thing should go, it should run. Um, one thing about these motors too, any stationary motors, or any motors at all really, you should leave all the carby linkages dry, uh, because if you oil carby linkages, they're just going to attract um, dirt and, and grit, and they'll wear out quicker uh, in field work if they're oily than if they're dry. Um, my father was a motor mechanic all his life and uh, you don't normally oil carby linkages um, unless they uh, say are sticking regularly and you want to try and free them up that way but normally run them dry and uh, they won't get the dirt on them and they'll um, stay clean and uh, move nice and freely so there we go time for some petrol and I'll put, take it outside and put it on the back of the ute and we'll We'll see if she goes. Stay tuned. Well, a slight hold up before we can uh, run it. I've got to fix the fuel tap. That's dripping. So there's a seal in there. Look, it's pissing out. So, okay. Can't run it yet. We'll have to fix up the tap. Hang on a bit longer. Right, the fact that the fuel tap's leaking is no big deal. Uh, you can either replace the tap or quite often these old girls, the way the fuel tap this piston goes in, the little little screw goes up underneath which holds it in, um, stops it coming out. But So take the screw out, pull out the plug and these unscrew. Now what's happened is standing over time, these unscrew and on here you've got a little cylinder of cork. This is uh, back in the old days, they used this type. And standing over time that cork has dried out and shrunk. Um, so the idea is you soak it in some fuel for a while and uh, when you've done that, put it back together. Now these also are adjustable. By screwing up the end, you, you crush up, squash up the cork and it will bulge out as well. So that will help, that will make it seal, uh, hopefully, uh, once it's expanded. So uh, what we'll do is we'll soak the old cork for a while. I'll go and have a, have a bit of lunch and a beer. And I'll come back after and we'll see if she... Uh, it's good to go. Okay, catch you later. Hang in there. We fixed the fuel tap. 
that uh, did the trick to soaking the uh, soaking the cork in uh, petrol for an hour and then uh, putting a bit of tension on it, um, put it back together, sealed up perfectly. Okay, so everything's pretty right. We've got oil in our air cleaner. Now I forgot to mention earlier on. You would have seen me spray some WD-40. Um, penetrating oil into the uh, plug hole. The reason I did that is a good idea on any old any motors that have been standing for quite a while to actually squirt some mist type lubricant into the spark plug hole and uh, spin it over a couple of times. I did that while I was checking the spark and that will help lubricate the rings and uh, you won't be starting the motor on dry rings so a good thing to do. Okay, we're all set to go. I've got the motor clamped to my Black & Decker work mate uh, workbench with a couple of G-clamps so it doesn't jazz around too much. Got the choke in the on position. The ignition is on, fuel's on. Cords are wrapped around so hopefully it'll go first pull. These billiards, if they're in good shape, generally start up really easily. Okay, now you saw how I did that. I gave it some revs. The mixture was out on it. So this is the mixture screw just here, this little one. So that's your, basically your main jet adjuster. So I sped it up, took it off choke, sped it up, got it to a rev range that was you know, close to where you'd be normally running it, and screwed the mixture jet out until it started to, to um, miss a little bit. Screwed it in until it started to miss, bring it back halfway. And that's your mixture setting, okay? So that's the optimal position. So now it should start first pop. Oh, it did last time, but it should it should go dead easy. Yeah, these are good little motors, these. So they go forever.
go. The little Avilias is back on deck and lives to fight another day. No smoke, no rattle, no roll. Perfect little motor. So there you go. It might be old, but it's still good. See you next time.